In today's video, I'll be showing you what it's like to fly in the refurbished Qantas Premium Economy product. I'll show you the airport experience, the seats and where not to sit, the food and drinks and let you decide if it's worth the extra cost over standard economy. Hello from Sydney Airport and today I'm off to Singapore with Qantas in Premium Economy. Now I haven't tried out this product since the days of the 747 so I'm curious to see how it's been upgraded. There's also been a lot of drama with Qantas in the media recently and their CEO has promised that the customer experience will improve so I'm also curious to see if that's going to happen as well. So why don't you join me and I will check in together and I'll show you what's like. Here we are at check-in and Qantas have introduced these self-serve machines which I think actually work really well if you're a regular flyer and know how to use them. You print your boarding pass, bag tags and drop off your bags at this conveyor belt. There are staff around to help if needed. I didn't see any special premium economy line although I bet it would be faster to just use these. I fly regular enough and have obtained platinum with Qantas so I'm allowed to use the first class check-in area. There is this semi-private marble box with some chairs and I'm sure that's exactly how the architects described it. After that it's off to security and while there is a special first and business class express lane, premium economy does not get access, neither does any status with the airlines, so I was off to the regular line. After clearing security, who now use machines that do not require you to take laptops out of the bag thankfully, I was in the departure hall. There's the usual shops selling hygiene products and handbags inspired by the French but probably assembled in Bangladesh. There's heaps of places to grab a bite and sit around and wait for your flight. Premium economy does not usually get you into any lounge but I was able to access the first class lounge because I'm platinum. So in addition to frequent fly points, if you fly with the same airline and the partners, you earn status credits which all add up and push you up the status ladder and you get a whole lot of perks even if you're traveling in economy or premium economy. Inside there's this living wall with these real plants which look fantastic, but then you're up another level of escalators to the rest of the lounge. And will you look at this view? There's plenty of comfy seats and tables, but I'm here to look at the planes. Well, after a quick bite and some dessert and some fruit juice. Now I'm going to do some plane spotting, so skip ahead to the time below if you just want to get on board and see the seat. Now I still remember when you'd have 747s lined up here at Sydney, but now there's quite a few A380s, which I'm certainly not complaining about, having seen how quiet this place was during the COVID lockdown. The A380 which we're flying on today really is an incredible and very safe aircraft. I have a video on my channel where I look around the A380 prototype in Toulouse, France and it's amazing that all 4 million individual components work together so well, including the 23,000 individual bolts. One of the obvious differences between this and the 747 is the upper deck which runs the full length, but did you know that Boeing did consider something similar? In fact, here's a model at the Museum of Flight in Seattle with a full length upper deck. Here's a 787-9 arriving, which I might add also has a perfect safety record with not a single loss, and it's cool seeing the smoke puff up right in front of you. Here's a Finnair Airbus A330, which Qantas are currently leasing because they've run out of planes, and Finnair are currently reducing their network because Russia refuses to allow them to overfly their territory, thus making some routes not viable, so they have some spare planes. And here's my aircraft arriving, Victor Hotel Oscar Quebec Bravo, an A380-800 that first flew in 2008. It's named Hudson Fish after one of the airline's founders. Designing a new and large aircraft is incredibly complex because you have to consider so much, including building catering trucks that can lift their load so high. No other airliner requires such a height, in fact the 747 only loads via the main deck and they use an internal lift to move the food up to the top deck. After more plane spotting, it was time to board the flight. As you can see here, Premium Economy are given access to the business class line as they make up the only two travel classes on the upper deck. First class and economy fill the entire lower deck. After entering the upper deck, we're in the business class cabin which, as you can see, is in a one to one layout. I have a video on my channel where I show you what it's like on a flight between Los Angeles and Sydney. Here's the premium economy cabin at the rear and my seat 31 Alpha, which is in the front row as you can see here. 
This is a bassinet seat, so there's a chance you'll be joined by a baby, but otherwise it has the advantage of extra leg room and there's no seat in front that may recline into you. I filmed another seat further back, which I'll show you shortly. The middle seats are in sets of three with pairs on both sides. They recline as you'd expect, and here's a view of my seat from behind. There's plenty of leg room and enough to pass your neighbour into the aisle without them having to leave their own seats, well at least in the front row. There's also this leg rest with a mesh net inside which worked better than it looked. I'll show you the mechanism from the other seats later. The first row gets a slightly smaller TV screen that is stored in the armrest and can't be used during takeoff and landing, unlike the other seats. Inside the other armrest is the fold-out table which felt sturdy enough. A glass of water or sparkling wine was offered during the boarding process and I'll continue with the seat tour. The biggest perk of the window seats are these storage bins just underneath the windows, which also work as a ledge to store stuff when the lid is closed. I only had one, although some seats get two of these large bins. You have to be careful to avoid the rows behind 37 as they don't have any as you can see here. Above you get an individual air vent which has a sturdy flow of cooling air. Waiting on your seat is a pillow, a blanket and better headphones. There was no Amanta kit on this day flight, although here's mine on the return night flight. It comes with eye masks, socks, a toothbrush and paste, earplugs and some hand cream. The bulkhead seats have a universal power plug to share with your neighbour down near your ankles. There's also a USB port near your armrest and other seats had another one below the TV screens. I should note that the port in your armrest charges much, much faster, so I just use that. There is this small reading lamp, and the headrest bends to provide more lateral support if you want it. Now let's check out my seat for the return flight 37J, just to give you an idea of what most seats look like. Here is a slightly larger 13.3 inch HD screen, and you can attach phones or tablets over it if you'd rather watch your own content. Below that is a USB port, and that silver thing is a button for the leg rest I'll show you in a sec. There's a storage spot in here, and below that is more space for magazines etc. And below that is the leg rest. There's the tan leather part where you can put your feet, or slide your legs down further into the black mesh net. And then the tan leather part holds your calves. I guess it's comfortable, although I haven't really tried enough similar seats to give a qualified opinion. The other difference with these seats is that the power plug is now looking at you from the seat in front, and there's now small bottle holders down near your ankles. Assuming the seat in front hasn't reclined, there's decent leg room, although once reclined, it really does get pretty tight, especially if your neighbour wants access to the aisle. But back to the original flight, which was now loaded and we're prepared for takeoff. It's always interesting watching the wing set up for low speed lift, well, it is for an av geek like me. What's incredible is how effortless the whole takeoff process is. There's usually a lot of noise and you're pushed back into your seat, but this really is an uneventful process in the Airbus A380. I pulled out my TV screen again and had a look through the content, which was decent. But there's still no onboard Wi-Fi, which is pretty unacceptable for 2024. A lot of people, myself included, try and justify to ourselves that we can pay for premium cabins because you can get some work done, but a lack of Wi-Fi really makes that argument more of a challenge. Apparently it is coming later this year, but it's certainly a big negative for Qantas when most other airlines offer it and have for a while. First up was a round of drinks and I went with the Qantas Sky Spritz cocktail and that was served with some nuts and pretzels. 
We departed Sydney around 4.30ish, so it was now dinner time and I went with the braised lamb shank with red wine mushroom sauce, potato puree and peas. The dessert was a carrot and walnut cake and on the side it was a Greek salad with lemon dressing. There was also some bread, chocolates and a splice ice cream. Overall it was a pretty large meal. Just for interest sake and to again show you a broader view of the premium economy product, here are the meals from our return QF2 flight from Singapore which was an 8pm departure. I went with the smoked salmon and salad entree, plant based main with cauliflower ragu and dessert was a tasty sticky date and pecan pudding with butterscotch sauce. Next door, again filmed with permission, had the chicken. And before returning to the original flight, here was a breakfast on QF2 served 90 minutes before arrival into Sydney. I went with the cold option and I thought it was perfectly good. In fact, I'm sure Qantas are providing more food than they did a few years ago. There are two toilets to share with 60 prime economy passengers and it's adequate. I did notice that a lot of passengers were sneaking into the two business toilets just ahead of you so I never had to wait in a queue. I sat back to watch a movie and watch the setting sun. One disadvantage of the storage bins is that your neighbour may use it as a footrest, which isn't ideal for my nose 30 centimetres away. I probably could have mentioned it to a flight attendant, but being the adult that I am, I just took photos and made stupid faces. Comment below with what you'd do in this situation. I certainly would not encourage anyone to spill any drinks in that direction. By the way, here's that reading light that isn't overly bright. Prior to our landing there was a light supper and I went with the butter chicken puff with mango chutney and a cake thing for dessert. During the flight there's a self serve display of snacks located in the rear galley. It wasn't long before we started our descent into a dark and humid Singapore. So how was the flight? I think the seat itself is pretty good and the leg room in the first row is excellent. But every other seat with a pitch of 38 inches versus 31 in economy isn't ideal especially if the seat in front reclines a little. Otherwise the seat is functional and those storage bins under the windows are really useful and much larger than you'd expect. Just be aware again that the last few seats after row 37 miss out on them. The food and drinks were great for a 7 hour flight. The service was good and on the one occasion I did press the call bell it was answered in around 10 or 15 seconds. There was plenty of entertainment on the IFE, although again the lack of Wi-Fi really is a major deficit and for me personally, if it's not rectified soon then I'll struggle to justify flying Qantas on longer trips due to the inability to do any work. And finally the price. Generally speaking, Qantas premium economy can be expensive and multiple times the cost of economy, so it will be quite individual if it's worth the extra cash over economy, especially if you can just get an extra legroom seat. Other airlines, like Vietnam, are often much cheaper, in fact sometimes their business class seats are cheaper than Qantas premium economy. This is where the airline status can be handy, as I mentioned earlier, where gold or platinum will get you into lounges and shorter queues even if flying in economy or premium economy. So there's also those benefits of sticking with the one airline and alliance to consider. As I said in the intro, there has been a lot of uh, dissatisfaction with Qantas on social media and much of that is legit, as it is pretty dodgy advertising for cancelled flights amongst other things. And we all know that the negative and dramatic vlogs do get more views, but this won't be one of them. My style is to show you what the product is like and then you can decide for yourself if it's any good. If something major did go wrong, sure I'd mention it because that's important, but this flight was fine. Those are my thoughts and I'd love to hear what you think. If you enjoyed the video and or found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up and check out my channel for many other videos including business class on this aircraft and Vietnam's premium economy for comparison. Thanks for watching.